Hello guys, I'm Data and welcome to my channel. Today we have a pretty special video. It's the new one on the skill tree. Why? Because the skill tree has changed again and the two videos that I have done in the past about it became, of course, obsolete. Today, though, I want to take a different approach to make the video better, to provide more infos. Uh, this is not meant to be a video um, that is like, hey, give me my skill tree code, and that's it. Uh, what I'm trying to do is to teach you how to create properly your own skill tree. So I want to bring you through the logical process that leads to take certain choices and not other choices. So instead of analyzing Mac by Mac or play style per play style, I'm gonna go through the skill tree itself, analyze tree by tree, and tell you more or less why you would take that or you would take other stuff um, on certain Macs and not on certain other Macs. This is meant also to be a uh, a comprehensive guide that explains also to new players what is a certain node. I want also to uh, go through the importance of the various nodes so that if you're skilling a new Mac uh, you know what path to take first. So let's get started. Radar deprivation. What is this node doing? Uh, this is a percentage decrease in the time that the enemy keeps you under lock while leaving the line of sight. So what happens is that there is a timer, I don't know how much it is, let's say four seconds, three seconds. So if the enemy locks you and uh, then you leave his line of sight, you stay locked for, I don't know, three seconds, four seconds, whatever. Uh, if you equip one node, this time, gets reduced by 20%. Two nodes, 40%, and so on. Of course, if you equip all of those, that timer gets reduced by 100%, so you instantly make your enemy lose the lock on you. Uh, that's a pretty important node, and uh, target decay works the other way. Uh, these are seconds, though. So for every node, you get plus 0.7 seconds. But this, for now, doesn't matter. We're starting from radio deprivation. I say that, with very few exceptions, the most important of all is radar deprivation. Why? Because LRMs are overbuffed cancer. Uh, in games where there is no radar deprivation, there is no AMS, there is no ECM, there are none of these counters. LRMs are just the win button that allows brain-dead noobs with no skills to basically utilize what is an aimbot, because LRMs have auto-aim, they're aimbot, that's what it is, to kill other people with aimbot, which is the exact opposite of the concept itself of PvP. So, given that LRMs are so widespread and so abused all over the game, you have to bring radar deprivation, because if you don't do that, every time you peek, you take a shower of lerms. Just one node is enough to do this, um, you get a blip noise when somebody targets you. It's also useful against non-LRM builds because as soon as you hide, the enemy instantly loses the lock on you, so you stay locked for less. They are less likely to recognize who you are, where you are, or what mech you have, so that's pretty important. Do you always need 100% rate of deprivation? Yes or no? Um, I've done multiple tests on this. Uh, on larger mechs, like I'd say awesome and above, unless you have 100%, you get demolished by LRMs. The point is that I always was against uh, this kind of design uh, for the rate of deprivation, but uh, my design got downvoted and thrown into the toilet in the cauldron, and instead this nonsense, stupidity, this abominable nonsense made it through. Thanks, Cauldron. Uh, where is the problem? The problem is that it doesn't create a gap between 60% and 100%. So once I go through this, first 40%, which is 
stupidly weak, requires five nodes. But once I get here, getting to 100% is an oblige choice. Because the, the majority of the coast, instead of being down, is up. My design instead had 60% straight away at the beginning. That's the bare minimum for an 85 plus toner, otherwise you just get learned to death anyways. And then all the other nodes that were meant to gate 100% were at the bottom. So you would get 60% straight away, then some gating nodes, even mixed with others, and then 80%, then a little bit of gating, and then 100% at the bottom, because 100% 100% is OP against Lerms. That's why we, we take it. But of course, this design didn't make it through, and this stupidity made it in. So guys, since one, you are obliged to put 100%, because once you get here, what are you going to do? It's just uh, some few nodes. Of course you get to 100%. Like, of course. Of course. You have to take it. There are very few exceptions. Um, mechs that are meant to hide. So, for example, Annihilator with uh, seven small lasers and uh, four LB10s, they're meant to hide near buildings, in caves, they're not meant to peek. So, on those, you can get away without radar deprivation because you're not exposing anyways. And if you expose, you are doing it wrong. You shouldn't expose. You should hide and ambush your enemy. Go to the HPG manifold basement, for example. Um, another exception could be some pseudo lights that are very fast and can uh, uh, go quickly into cover. Um, I don't know, a piranha. But again, you need at least 40% even there. And what do you do? The difference between 40 and 100% is just this. So, of course, you take all of it all the time. Because the guys who designed this abomination have some issues. It just doesn't make sense. And of course, my project got thrown into the garbage. Let's go on. Uh, next most useful nodes uh, a must pretty much everywhere. Now, the survival. Now, thanks God the survival is useful even on heavies and uh, assaults. Which one should you pick first? Depends on, uh, um, on your quirks. So you should read your quirks and decide next. Why? Because the skill tree buffs not only the base values of your mech, so the armor of your mech that comes from the points that you click, but it buffs also the quirks. So if you have armor, this is buffing also your armor quirks. So if your mech has armor quirks, start first from the armor tree. If your mech has structure quirks, go with the skeletal density first, and then take both. So the first thing that you should take is radar deprivation, because LRMs are too strong. I tried to suggest a change that, to cut it short, it makes radar deprivation less powerful against LRMs. It makes ECM less powerful against LRMs. It makes AMS less powerful against LRMs, but then nerfs LRMs. Because LRMs are too powerful when where none of these counters are present on the battlefield. Of course, the cauldron picked my project and threw into the trash can as they usually do. Um, next one, you should go for the survival, we have said this, it's very important. Uh, after this, it depends. Uh, if you have lasers, the next most useful nodes are laser duration nodes, for most of the lasers. Unless you have some overpowered lasers, like the micro pulses, the small pulses that can work well on their own, so you can get away even without. You can put it, you can avoid it. That's how small weapons are balanced. So if you have a big weapon that gets equipped on an assault, you either put these nodes like ER larges, heavy larges, and so on, or you eat shit. But since lights are our favorite weight class, 
if you put small pulses, micro pulses, and so on, the duration is excellent even without the nodes. So you don't need these. Uh, in f if, on the other hand, you have uh, ballistic weapons, then the next most useful nodes are these ones. More ammunition, this is more ammunition, less spread for the, the pellets when the LBX shoot. Um, this, uh, it's, uh, you, you put on both, on UX and you put on, uh, on racks. And uh, this is not correct. UAC jam chance, it, it's a remnant from another era. It used to be jam chance. It isn't jam chance anymore. Now it's jam duration. So once they jam, how long do they take until they start unjamming? These nodes reduce that time. The way I see it, it was better with jam chance. Uh, jam duration is weak, is not strong. What's good is jump chance, because you peak, you shoot, and what stops you from shooting is the fact that the Ultra has jammed. Once it's jammed, it's jammed, and you need to go in cover and hide and wait. Now, once you go in cover, you can wait five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, six seconds, doesn't matter, because you've lost your farm already. You were forced to go to cover and wait. And it doesn't make any difference if you wait five seconds or you wait four seconds because you have jam duration. What's the strong quirk is jam chance because it determines if you stop farming or not. Next one, velocity. Due to the over buffs in terms of agility that have been given to the whole pseudo light class, uh, velocity is mandatory on every weapon that has projectiles. 15% uh, velocity boost in, is pretty big for five nodes. The point is that uh, with the agility pass delivered last year and never fixed, um, pseudo lights, which is like 45 tonners and less, gain an incredible edge in terms of agility compared to the 100 tonners. This is another big mistake because the big mechs were already suffering in terms of agility and uh, due to the agility pass, the gap in terms of agility was increased even more in favor, of course, of the pseudolites. Uh, you need velocity because now their capacity to turn, uh, to change direction while at full speed accelerate, decelerate, is so overbuffed that many projectiles are just not fast enough. You shoot the projectile, and by the time the projectile gets there, they change their direction already. So you miss them, not because you're shit, but because something happens after you shot the projectile. They, they move after you shoot the projectile, so it's, it's not on you. If, even an aimbot would miss, because the thing changes after you shot the projectile. Velocity gives less chance for this to happen because the projectile gets there first. Uh, you need velocity on all the weapons because the agility of uh, many light mechs and is just above the roof. It doesn't make any sense. You need velocity. Um, so, we covered uh, these nodes uh, as well. The next important nodes are the missile ones, if you have missile max. Uh, these are very important. MRMs, SRMs, LRMs, these are very important. So again, starting just a quick recap. First, radar deprivation, then survival according to what I told you before, then the special nodes, um, which is uh, laser duration, all these ones, depending on the weapons that you have, then velocity. Okay, after this, um, next important one uh, is the gyros. Uh, this determines how much your screen will shake when you get hit. If you don't put these, every time you get hit, your crosshair goes all over the place. You can't see shit. Like, you get negated just because a pay guy is shooting you with an AC2. You can go with full four. I, I'm okay with two. 
cool run. Um, is this important? Yes, it's very important. Cool run uh, buffs your heat sinks. Your heat sinks dissipate more heat with these nodes. So this is extremely important and you should get this. Zoom, if you have a Mac that is meant to use Zoom at range. This is for double strike and double cool shot. They are very important if you can afford them. Uh, this node is needed on artilleries because it makes the bomb drop closer to each other. Uh, but not for airstrike because what it does for airstrike is that makes the length, it makes the, it makes the strike too compact. What you want to do with the airstrike is that you want to hit a rock and have it go for a long distance. And maybe hit even a little bit more left and right, left and right, to so increase the chances of hitting something. If it becomes too close and compact, you'll miss a lot more. Uh, so on the airstrikes, you don't want this. On artillery strikes, you want this. Um, then, the other important stuff is the weapon tree. Which ones do you put? Depends on the Mac. Uh, just a quick recap, um, just a quick um, th stuff that I missed. Of course, this bu I told you this buffs your heatsinks. So how important is this? Depends on how many heatsinks you have. That's pretty obvious. If you have a, a heatsink boat, this is extremely important. If you don't have that many heatsinks, it is still very important, but not as important as if you have 20 or more double heatsinks. So I would say that if you're running on 10 double heatsinks, the first thing is the heat gentry. Uh, instead, if you have a, a big uh, double heatsink boat, the first thing is cool run, out of the two, of course. Um, weapons. Depends. This, again, it depends. If you have a laser vomit that is meant to fire and peak, then you need full range, full heat. If you have a DACA boat that is meant to expose and shoot DPS, then you have to sacrifice range and go full cooldown, full heat. Um, if you have some sort of micro pulse machine gun combo, since these, since these small weapons are overbuffed, they don't need, basically, they barely need range. The machine guns don't benefit from cooldown. Of course, they don't benefit from heat gen. Small pulses, they don't need cooldown or heat gen. You just go full range and you get pretty much another free good amount of uh, nodes to put somewhere else. So for the heavies and their assaults, uh, that's pretty much it. These are the most important nodes, then what's left, you go with the uh, reinforced casing that has been uh, recently buffed. For an usual pseudo light, let's take... Vulcan with mask. Let's discuss about this one. Um, when you are talking about mediums and lights, the, um, the topic is interesting because these kinetic burst and heartbreak work in percentages. So if you have a high default value, it's worth to take them. If you don't have a high default value, it is not worth. So pretty much um, on mediums and lights, you should use heartbreak and kinetic burst in what amount? What I found um, is that on a heavier mediums like Shadowhawk, for example, on the Shadowhawk type of mechs, which includes, say, also the Wolfhound uh, and all those mechs that are not mainly based on running as fast as possible, you go with Heartbreak. Why? Why Heartbreak over Kinetic Burst, even if there is speed weak here? Because Heartbreak, when you are peeking and hiding, peeking and hiding, is what makes your mech feel more snappy. 
when your max has more deceleration, it feels snappier. So the first thing is deceleration. Then if you have room left, you go for acceleration and speed tweak. You do this on max that must go fast, that are based on going fast. Piranhas, Mistlinxes, Vulcan with mask, and so on. Where do you take those nodes from? Um, you, since you're small, you can try to take them off the Garros, you can try that. Uh, but you take them um, from the weapons. Because, again, the small weapons are overbuffed, like snobs, small pulses, machine guns, regular small lasers. They work fine even without the entire weapon tree. So you get more from these trees than you get from the weapon tree. In what amount you change this depends on the mech. If you find that your mech has already quite a good amount of range but needs to shoot more DPS, you go for cooldown and not for range. If you find that your mech is already cold enough that you don't overheat that often, you can skip some heat gen and put other stuff. So you need to find your balance now, mech by mech, depending on the build. For example, a 40 toner with two snubs is excessively cold. So you can skip some heat gen. Gets a lot from range. Doesn't get that much from cooldown because you're peeking, shooting and hiding. So waiting four seconds or four seconds and a half doesn't change anything. So we covered many of these. Reinforced casing, again, it's the last thing. It is useful, but before it was just a, an automatic skip. Now it is decent, and if you have some spare nodes, you should definitely take it. You should definitely take it. Um, okay, uh, let's go through some other specific trees. What do we have here? Uh, yeah, the other notes. Uh, torso pitch, torso yo, torso speed. You can buff them as much as you want. We don't have 130 notes. Those mechs starve on other things. Like these mechs, the souls, the heavies, they can't survive without the stuff that I put here. You remove radio deprivation, you get learned to death. You remove cool run or heat, you can't shoot, you overheat. You remove range on laser vomits, that, that defeats the whole purpose of being laser vomit. You're not a brawler, you're a laser vomit. You, have, you need range. Um, you get rid of survival, you lose a torso instantly because you're too big. You can't get away uh, without these nodes, so you can buff these as much as you want. It's a fake buff, it's just smoke thrown into the ice to say that, hey, we have buffed uh, the agility in the tree, go take it from there. Because this is another topic of discussion in these months. There are people who say, okay, assaults need more agility, put that in the skill tree. Yes, you think like this is you are either stupid or you are maliciously trying to deprive the assaults of the very much needed agility pass that is getting delayed more and more. The point is you can buff the agility in the skill tree as much as you want, you don't have the nodes to take them, so it doesn't matter. It's just smoke thrown into the eyes to say that, hey, go take the agility from there. Yes, you tell me with which nodes I should take it, because I don't know. Next ones, anchor turn. Anchor turn is uh, very important on uh, some edge cases. It determines how close, given that you are rotating around a point, the more is the anchor turn, the shorter is the radius. So if you rotate like this around an object at full speed, if you put more anchor turn, Instead of being the rotation at, at max turning capability, max speed being like this, it's going to be like this. 
So you're going to be able to hold a closer angle. You're going to be uh, closer to the assault that you're farming. So this is needed for mislinxes, piranhas, locusts, uh, fleas, those mechs. Mo more on those with machine guns because you can rotate under the enemy legs as fast as you can, faster and faster and faster, without having to take a wide angle and give the enemy the opportunity to shoot back. This is how you abuse the fact that the assaults don't have agility. This is very abusive, very abusive on piranhas, mistlingses, and all that kind of garbage that, uh, uh, that ruins the game. Uh, lift speed, vent calibration, you need this in comp. If you know that you want to get to a certain places, to a certain place, and uh, you want to get there with uh, one jump jet before putting the other jump jet, because maybe you don't want to waste more tons, you try to put these nodes and uh, see if you manage to get up there. Vectoring: um, if you put all five of these on a jump jet Mac, uh, you bug it. So what happens if that if you go back and forth, back and forth, and uh, you jump it while you do that with full vectoring? At some moment, the mech disappears from one place and reappears in another place. I've done a video on this uh, on that topic. Uh, that's pretty old. It's a way to bug the game. I don't know how useful it is though. Quick ignition, no. Uh, heat shielding, very useful on pop tarts. Uh, how this mitigates the heat output of the jump jets while you're using them. It's useful on the pop tarts. Speed retention. No. Heat containment. Um, this determines how much heat your mech can contain. The bar always shows 0 to 100 percent, the heat bar, but that 100% is not the same on all the Macs. Depends on how many heat sinks you have and how much heat containment you put. So if you take the same Mac and you alpha strike and you get to 50%, when you put full heat containment, instead of getting to 50%, you get to 48%, 47%. Not because your weapons are generating less heat, but because there is more heat capacity contained into that bar. So that 100% is bigger fact. Is this needed on mechs with a lot of heat capacity? What gives you a lot of heat capacity? Quirks. There, is a, there are some mechs, that I don't remember exactly which ones, but there is, I think, a mech or two with the heat capacity uh, quirk, but above all, standard heat sinks. So if you have a standard heat sink boat, you may want to pick this. Seismic sensor. Is it useful? Is it not useful? Uh, on brawlers. On brawlers, it is very useful. On brawlers, it is very useful. You want this instead of the radio deprivation. Um, 200 meters, you use this to get blips on the radar when you have stuff moving around the corner. If the enemy mech is standing still, this doesn't work. Um, why on brawlers? Because on brawlers, you want to go on purpose into close combat situation and see what's around the building. On snipers, though, unlike what people say, is completely useless because it just gives you 200 meters. It means that when the light mech behind you taps the 200 meters for the first time, you get a blip. So even if you are a robot, from when he taps the 200 meters, you get the blip. You see the blip. You turn, the light mech has already alpha strike you in the back. So unless this gets buffed to 400 meters, I need to stand still for it to work, of course. Uh, this does not prevent backstabbing because the range is too short and you can back, you get backstabbed before you react. So people who say put this to prevent backstabbing on snipers, they are just brain dead idiots. This does not do anything to prevent backstabbing on sniper. It used to when it had 400 meters range and it worked also when you were moving. But then, thanks to the light fan boys crying over and over, it got nerfed into the ground and uh, 
for the amusement of those people who enjoy ruining other people's experience by getting in the back and alpha striking with a 20 toners that delivers more alpha strike than a 100 toners because fuck this game and uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, hill climb, it was bugged. Uh, it didn't used to work. Now it works. Um, it works just up to a certain angle. So it's not working. Is the angle goes above a certain threshold. So it doesn't really let you climb vertically. It just um, prevents you from slowing down too much on uh, slopes with uh, a small angle. You may want to put one and give it a try. Whatever. The problems are other. Uh, target DK. We already went through this. Target info gathering. When you lock somebody, you get earlier information. It's been used to gate seismic sensor because, you know, while before we had seismic sensor near radar deprivation, so I could take full radar deprivation and then one and two take seismic sensor. You know what? Let's shit on snipers even more and make them spend even more nodes to get something that before they could get straight away because for a sniper this is completely useless but at least before it was just two nodes so you were like okay it's just two nodes let's give it a try now i'm never gonna spend seven nodes for something that it's 100 percent useless unless i'm a brawler ecm nodes mandatory for ecm uh, if you have an ecm mac you better go this way um one node just to get the blip when you get targeted and then you go two ecm nodes out of two otherwise you ecm gets cancelled by enemy raider too early cancelled for the mech that is trying to lock you but rule number one if you have ecm put both of these target retention uh it you hold the lock when the light rotates around you. That's useful for streak boats. Cap assist, excellent for cap bots. Um, mm, 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 mm. Cool shot cooldown, whatever. If you are into a brawl, you can take a cool shot cooldown and you won't be able to use two cool shots straight away. So it doesn't do anything. You're a sniper, you just wait a little bit more. It doesn't impact the game at all. UAV range, excellent on those mechs who bring UAVs. Uh, UAVs are an excellent way to play. They're very strong. Say on those mechs where maybe you can afford removing some weapons, some stuff, you can go double strike, double cool shot, double UAV in comp. You do it all the time on pseudo lights. Um, even in quick play, say a piranha with 12 machine guns, three micro pulses doesn't need cool shots. So you don't put the cool shots, you put UAVs. Uh, NARC must have on knock bots uh, of course AMS AMS is very useful for AMS max but AMS by itself is completely useless because um, it has been indirectly nerfed into the ground uh, to the point that now it's merely a bolt-on um, what happened is that uh, the guys kept buffing and buffing the missile health. It determines how much a single missile resists to AMS. Those values have been pretty much doubled across the board. So AMS doesn't do anything for the enjoyment of those cancers, Pepegas with aimbots who like to ruin your day with LRMs because you need to go around, play the game, try to increase your skill, try to put effort, maneuver left and right, and they need to sit on their chair, getting locks in indirect fire, like, and ruin your day. And AMS got nerfed on top of that. Uh, shock absorbance, this is needed uh, on jump jets, max, on jump jet max. Uh, determines how much damage you take when you fall down if you go past a certain threshold. So when you have to take damage, if you have these nodes, you take less. 
So this is very important on uh, Jump Jet Max. Ooh, these ones, flamer ventilation, they are useless. Um, the last thing that I haven't covered is the differences between the weight classes and the difference between tech. The way it works right now, um, the values of the skeletal density and armor hardening uh, are the highest on the 20 tonners. Then they started decreasing till they reach 60 tons. From 60 tons up, they don't decrease anymore. They stay as the 60 tonner skill tree. This means that if you put 20 armor on uh, a uh, 30 tonner and you put 60 armor on a 90 tonner, so per three, per three, once you apply the skill tree, the gap re gets reduced and goes more in favor of the light mech, of course, as expected. Um, the other thing is the tech differences. Uh, the skill tree is different between clan and inner sphere. In particular, the clan skill tree is weaker. Uh, clans get minus 2.5 on laser duration. Inner sphere, on the other hand, get 3.75. Same thing for the heat gen and the cooldown. The inner sphere one is significantly stronger because in, instead of getting 0.6 per node, they get 0.75. I didn't take a calculator to, to calculate that, but I guess that it's more than 20% uh, boost. So it's, I haven't calculated, but it's like, you know, 0 0.6, it's 33% uh, would be 0.20. Yeah, it's around 27% more from 0 0.6 to 0.75. So it should be around 27% more. Uh, so yeah, it's a pretty big boost for Inner Sphere. That's it for today. Uh, if I get more stuff, if I remember that I missed something, I'll, I'll do another video and I'll cover it. Uh, so that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this kind of content. If so, remember to like my video, smash the subscribe button, share the content with your friends, and hit the bell to enable the notifications. I'll catch you guys next time.